Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to R Square Technology. I am your host Ryan, and let's get ready to SolidWorks. Welcome back to uh, Monday. For probably most of us, it's our least favorite day, but here we are yet again with another challenge video, and we are still continuing the series of the motorcycle truck bed trailer. And today we're jumping away from the torsion axle subassembly and we're going to go and make it the wheel. Wheel, ram, eh, tomato, tomato. Depends on how you want to look at it. I'm calling the wheel, aka rim, the metal part of the wheel assembly, if you will. And then we'll model a tire as its own part. I've done some search for trailer wheels and boy are there endless options out there. So I picked one that I thought was pretty cool looking so we'll recreate it not exactly but similar so with that let's get started all right so upon further evaluation of this wheel that i've been looking at here we're going to make this a two part we're going to start with the outer profile that's going to have the beads for the tire and then in the second video, we'll come in and add in the spokes plus the center portion that has the through holes for the hub bolts. And then, of course, the separate will be the hub assembly itself and, of course, some lug nuts. So let's get going here. First thing to do be front plane choice in this case, because, again, my trailer frame and the the plane I started that on, everything is mostly going to be modeled on the front plane. There will be some exceptions where we'll create some things on the right plane, such as, say, a license plate or tail lights. Those will be predominantly made right plane, of course, depending on the profile we create. So, with that, actually, now I think about it, we'll make this part of the wheel. as a right side profile. So, let me go back isometric here so we can see this. So, when we have our isometric cube here, the wheels are gonna come in this way. But because of what I'm going to use for the external profile piece, we're actually going to use the right plane. Okay, so select the right plane, control eight to bring it normal to. Again, you can also hit the space bar and you can choose the different sides that you want to be normal to. Many ways to do that, as you've probably seen in previous videos. So we're gonna choose the right plane, we're gonna choose a sketch, and we're gonna create some center line slash construction geometry. So for this, if you watched my Friday tutorial videos, you'll note that when you make a center line, and it doesn't have to be fully defined, in other words, I don't have to have this length fully defined, I just need one endpoint coincident to the origin and it to have a horizontal relation. In this particular case, horizontal or vertical. I mean, you may have an angular offset depending on its axis of revolution, but in this case, we want a 90 degree. So we want it to do this. So by having just one center line, when I create the rest of the sketch, it's going to automatically choose this as the axis of revolution. If there are any other center lines added, I will then have to manually choose this. So depending, we may be able to get away with just this and automatically select it, maybe not. So from here, then we can start to create the general profile. I'm zooming out with the center scroll wheel on my mouse here. And the overall diameter of this is 13.5 inches. So what I'll actually do here is choose a midpoint and make the midpoint of that line coincident to the origin. Drag out, and I want a vertical relation. And this is going to become 
right click on it, a center line. So now it won't have an automatic axis of revolution choice because now there's two of these. It's not gonna automatically pick it, which is totally fine. And now from here, we're gonna create the general profile. So it looks like that's a complete radius. So even from here, there's gonna be a lot of construction line geometry to help me pave the way. So let's define this one though, for sure. It's gonna be 13.5 inches, total diameter here. Make sure that's a fully defined point there. And our maximum width is five inches based on some Googling for this wheel. Again, I'm not gonna create it exactly, but we're gonna borrow just the overall dimensions for it. So now from here, what I can do is we're gonna take and grab this and we'll make something like this. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. It does not have to be exact. Now, granted, you could use a spline for this and maybe we'll do that for a little bit greater control. Splines can be interesting to say the least, but so I'm going to right click select. Notice it looks just like a diagonal line, but it has two handles. And this allows us to do something a little bit more unique and greater control than a standard three point arc. So I'm going to leave that undefined for now, underdefined. It looks like we're gonna be doing something like this. Again, we gotta have a bead here. Then it looks like it's gonna come down something like this. I'm gonna select, uh, I'll add another spline in here that's gonna act as an arc. Right click, select. And I'm going to drag the handles out because I want to know that, that is going to be an arc point. So let's see, we've got bead, shelf, a little bit of a drop, another looking shelf, and then we got the trough profile here. Which even this might be a type of radius. So, eh. It's hard to determine from the photo I'm working off here. So I'm gonna take some liberties with this and just say that this is gonna be something like this. And we'll do it like that. Again, not precise, not to be meant to be 100% accurate. We're just kind of using this to create, you know, demonstrate concepts of SolidWorks, right? How to do certain things. So from here, let's define this profile. And that might actually have a tangent blend. So what I'm gonna do is delete this line, use a three point arc, then add this line in here. Again, I'm gonna adjust things as I see fit. Control selects multiple items, joins it. I can change this to whatever I want. I'm actually gonna give this one specifically an angular dimension out the gate of five degrees. And then this one here as well. So you need to pick the end point of these handles on the spline, 20 degrees. That one can actually be much greater. So we'll make that 20 degrees. We're giving this a distance, 0.875. This one here, before I do any other adjustments, I'm gonna take the spline and this arc and make sure that they have a tangent relation. Then I want this arc and this line here to be tangent relation as well. And let's play with this a little bit. 
So this is the back side. That's going to be about equal. Let's see. What do I want to do with you? Probably be a little bit more rounded. So that. Let's make the length on this one. Yeah, 0 0.455. And... Let's make this point three four five and it comes down point five. Sure, we'll go with that. Then from here let's make this distance in. 1.5 inch depth. And how about one inch? There we go, that'll work. This is five degrees. So, let's see, we got that. Let's add a height to that as well, which will fully define this point six. Five. Now we're getting somewhere. Let me give this a radius. Oh, this is our secondary spline. No, this is not. Quite interesting. It's integrated itself as a spline. case five inch perfect fully defined there looking good looking gorgeous and now we're at this spline here Let's remove this spline. That's a lot of mumbo jumbo going on there. Let's just take these two, merge them, bring this down. Let's do this at, go off the center. Remember, this is the equivalent of the radius, or if you drag press construction line, this is your diameter. And we'll make this 10.5 inches. That's got horizontal relation, I want that. And we're going to make this 0.655. And that'll give us a good shape. Now from here, I want to mirror all that so I don't have to do it again. And this, about this line here. And now we've got our basic profile. Now from here, we're simply going to come over to the Features tab, and now we are going to do a revolved boss base. And in this case, so 
If you've seen one of my Friday tutorial videos, I'm not going to tell you which one. You get to go look through them. I encourage it. Learn something, yeah? There is instances where you can use a thin feature profile. In other words, the, this sketch is not closed. And I'm going to say yes, I want... There's apologies. I'm going to say no, I don't want it to close this profile off because I wanted to use this thin feature which will then allow me to create a thickness from that. So, say no. And again, my axis revolution is not going to be automatic because I have two that are drawn in here. So I'm gonna select this and we have a profile here. We're gonna choose one direction and we're gonna click okay just real quick to show what we've got created here so far. We'll hit control S with that. And we've got our general profile. So now from here, taking a look at the thickness, we can change over here. And we can go reverse it. Let me bring it in more. And I do not want to actually reverse it. We want to keep it here because this is our maximum diameter we can achieve. So keep that as is hit control S, we're going to right click on it, and then we're going to choose a color, and we're going to make this black. Select OK, just for now. I'm going to turn the color off when we come back to modifying and making the second part. So, that is the first part of the wheel. I hope you learned something from that. Stay tuned next Monday where we will finish this wheel off, add the spokes, add the centerpiece, and add some more detail to it. Until then, take care, and I will see you next time.